Hello again and good morning. This uh, appeared on my news feed this morning, but it was dated for yesterday, November 3rd, 2001. Today is November 4th, 2021. And this says that the oil and natural gas company, Pioneer Natural Resources, sells the Delaware Basin asset, one of their assets, they have several, for 3.5, 3.5, Point two five billion dollars. Uh, if you follow the news back in April, Pioneer, and it talks about it on here. This was big with the torchlight asset holders. In April, uh, Pioneer acquired another property from a young man for for $6.4 billion, and that made headlines with the Torchlight asset holders at the time, as it started to give people a good idea of a price per acreage, a more topical price per acreage coming out of the pandemic. However, um, like I said, after talking with people who were in the industry, uh, something as large as the Oro Grande Basin would go for a price per barrel, because the quantity is known at so many barrels, I had I started to formulate my method of calculating out price based on how much oil you have. And then Pioneer also completed another deal back in last year. Uh, this was almost a year ago. Uh, they acquired Parsley Energy, but that also included four and a half billion dollars of stock. But this, Pioneer selling one of their lower performing assets, they sold it to a company called Continental. And Continental is owned by billionaire Harold Hamm, who started in the industry as a 20 year old with his own company back in the 60s when you could do such a thing. And Harold Hamm is expecting to really uh, gain from a lot of this, so he purchased this for $3.2 billion. Let's look at some of the uh, key highlights from this transaction. So this is a paper uh, from the Continental Resources website. And you can go in here and look at the November investor update, which was came out yesterday in tandem with the press release. So now we know what to expect when the Torchlight asset is announced and there's a press release, you'll probably get a PDF going over some, some things, or at least the company acquiring the asset, I should say, will distribute a PDF. This particular comp property is not contiguous, as you can see. The Ore Grande Basin is a big chunk of contiguous property. This is not. This is more akin to the Conoco Phillips Royal Debt Shell, which is in the blue here. It's chunks and peppered. That was a much bigger acreage. This is 92,000 acres. Basically in three chunks, or two big chunks and two smaller chunks couple of pieces here and there. Key interest, it has 92,000 acres. Again, you're paying, notice the leasehold. You can buy in Texas, uh, which many people aren't aware of, because Texas, you can buy land and have zero mineral rights to it. So when you buy land, you have to ask if it comes with mineral rights, how much, because a lot of times you can buy land with zero mineral rights and the mineral rights are owned by somebody else. Uh, that's very common in Texas, actually. Uh, their working interest is 93%. Average working net interest. Some place, some chunks you'll have more working interest, some chunks you'll have less working interest. They have 93% working interest. And an average 80% of net revenue interest. So that's pretty good. So they got about 80% of this, uh, 80%. All right, on average, some is more, some is less. And that will go into our calculations. 50,000 net royalty acres. 
they got one eighth royalty. So they that means they don't get all, an entire royalty. Fifty thousand of these acres of the ninety two, they get one eighth of a royalty. So which isn't much, but it's from a free cash flow standpoint, it's great. It's terrific. And that's what they set themselves up. If you read the paper at the end, they're really setting themselves up to uh, get free cash flow. So, this, so they are expecting by next year to be producing 55,000 barrels of oil a day. That really plays out to the projections and, and the numbers offered. It says here, they took control of the asset on October 1st. And they're... And it, today is November 4th. So they already had control of the asset for a month when they announced this. And now they're going to close in December 2021. So Torchlight. And as you can see, I'm wearing a coat because it's very cold today. Although it is starting to warm up. It was 45 degrees yesterday and rainy. This morning it was cold. It was about 43. And now it's 54 and the sun's starting to come out. Tomorrow, it's supposed to be 65 again, but for now, I'm very cold. So what do we know? The figures to use, we know they are wanting to produce 55,000 barrels of oil a day. If you multiply 55,000 barrels of oil a day times 365 days, you get tw about 20 million a year. Times that by the 25 year plan. Could be more, could be less. And it's about $501 million. There could be less, could be more. This seems to, to equal out. So it's $501 million. 501 million barrels of oil estimated on this property. Could be more, could be less. But that's a reasonable estimate. Judging by our two previous other case studies, this seems to be a reasonable method. We know from seeing this picture that Continental has an 80% revenue interest in the property with an additional eighth of a, eighth of a royalty on the 50,000 acres. Now that's a little bit more... That adds a little bit more in, too. Um, on what, I'm not sure it's those particular acres, which it did not say what and what they're capable of producing. It all depends on what acres and how much those particular acres produce. They will receive a small royalty from the oil. But that will increase the price. When you get royalties, that does increase the price. So they 80 net revenue interest. 80% net revenue interest. And... Going by the Roller Pigeons oil estimation method, current price of oil is about 82 bucks a barrel, or it was yesterday when they announced this. 82 bucks a barrel minus uh, Texas cost. If you look on this sheet, it'll show you that their average cost is about $23 a barrel, but they have wells in several states, not just Texas. But for Texas purposes, 82 and this particular property, 82 minus 25, that gives us $57. Times that by 12%, it could be up to 18%, but 12% of this gross is related to the valuation of oil in the ground when you know the oil quantity. And usually they do at this point because of geological, technological advances. 12% of 57 is 6.84. Now, they have 80% net revenue interest. 12 lights in the aura grind is 49.9. So, 80% of $6.84 is $5.47.2. It's five dollars and forty-seven point two cents. We take five dollars and forty-seven point two cents and we multiply it by known barrels. Five 
Known barrels puts us at 501 million barrels. Estimate. Estimate. Could be more, could be less. That's our estimate. This is speculation. Multiply the two numbers together, together you get 2 billion... We'll put this in terms of millions. It makes it so much easier. So you get 2.741. Okay. 2,000 million. So it's 2.471 billion. That's in terms of millions because the next number. Now, on this sheet, it says that they have acquired with this transaction... They have acquired, um, under the highlights, significant water infrastructure in place. They have water disposal capacity, so they have their own abatement system uh, for fracking water. And they have 180 miles of fracking pipeline. If you look at this particular... Particular article from Reuters that I will pull up. It says that um, it gives a breakdown on the cost of water in the Permian Basin. So this is very topical to this particular purchase with Pioneer and Continental. Uh, this article was written three years ago. So that would be 2018, right, 2018. So this company, TPG, uh, agreed to pay $930 for a majority stake, not all of it, but majority stake in a water pipeline network for fracking water. So you don't have to truck it in and truck it out. It's for 420 miles, and they got a stake in it for $930 million. That's a rate... So that's, if you divide $930 million by 420 miles of pipe, it comes out to 2.214 million dollars per line of pipe, mile of pipe. Again, that's not all install that's new, or that's a stake in it. So we can assume, okay, this was, they paid a price for this because they highlighted it in their asset and it is a huge expense. So, they pay 2.241, and they have 100 Continental slash Pioneer had 180 miles of that pipeline. That's $3.98 million, plus the abatement facility, we can reasonably say $400 million. Okay. If you add $400 million to 2 billion 741 million, if you add these two numbers together, the $400 million for the water assets, it could be a bit more. And then the oil price, $2.741 billion. You have $3.141 billion. And they paid $3.25 billion. So that's not too far off. That's we are about a tenth of a billion off. We're about a hundred million dollars off. Not too bad. Again, I don't know what other infrastructure is on this property or if the grade of crude is very light, which would bring up the valuation price more. The lighter the grade, the more it is. I go by WTI as what this is was Texas crude based on those prices. And again, let's cite. That they do have, they probably paid more for it because they do have, on 50,000 acres, they have one-eighth of a royalty interest. So no matter what they do with the property, if they keep that royalty, they always make money. So th th no matter what minerals on it. So that's really interesting. And that could also figure into the price as well. Okay, so not too bad. We're about $100 million off using my valuation, but that's not counting in for the royalty and then the grade of the oil and the exact valuation of the oil, which we've estimated it, but it seems pretty close. I mean, we're a tenth of a billion off. 
of okay. his name on Twitter. I will cite him. I just call him Josie Wales because his avatar is a Clint Eastwood character, but his name is Sea Plant. Website. As I explained in other videos and with Uncle Smokey, we walked you through this, the live rendition of the permits, uh, when they're mapping, when it was approved. So there were two new permits submitted, yes, or no, on the first. On the first, there were two new permits submitted on the Railroad Commission uh, for Husbeth, which is the, the torchlight property. And these are uh, recompletions. So they're drilling. Those wells on that property were a bit deeper. These ones are only like 4,200 feet. So we're in a Bone Spring area. We're in Wolf Camp Bone Spring area of geology. Those got submitted on the 1st. And today's the 4th. And as you can see, like I said... Um, back on October 26th, I think, or it was one of my videos then, how the last two wills got proved. But see this? Now there's more things submitted. This makes me sit, think really, like, it makes me really consider that somebody is taking control of the asset. It Now this is speculation. This is based off of the two other case studies that we have done. This is based off of the Kanako. This is based off of the other case study, Kanoko Phillips, where they took control of the asset in July, and you didn't know about it until September. And then this one, they took control October first, and you just learned about it four weeks later, four and a half weeks later. So. Here's these previously done wells, the Rich 11. On my first video, actually, I talked about this. Uh, they have submitted for recompletions to new drillings. It exceeds what the university has said, so I think somebody is taking control of the asset. And they're just waiting to announce this. That's what I think I could... There's a very good chance I could be wrong. This is just me speculating at this point. But I will cite Sea Plant, uh, Josie Wales, Clint Eastwood. There's his name. I cannot pronounce his name, but kudos to you. Thank you for providing that so I don't have to check. It makes things a bit easier. Use technology. That's what Meta's about, right? Using Try again. All right, guys, with that being said, I hope this case study uh, can help you with Torchlight and the asset. Key takeaways is that, again, this mirrors a lot of Conoco Phillips shell, rolled Dutch shell transaction in that somebody took control of the asset. And it was sometime later they announced it. We went through the valuations and how that's still pertinent to Torch and my roller pigeon method of valuation still holds true. Uh, this had a bit more infrastructure and royalties on it. And then uh, we learned that applying that somebody could control the asset and then these recompletions of wells that are now coming up, somebody could very well have control of the asset. We won't know about it until it's announced. So I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.